People haven't been taking us seriously no in the one? industry for like five years, and it doesn't matter to us. They didn't take us serious when we were on a label. As a band, you release an album. Once a year would be amazing, that's everyone's goal, right? But I mean, we've learned over the past year even, by releasing little EPs here and there, that it gets tough. People just, they won't listen to a track past like six. So I think what we're gonna start doing as far as changes go, are just releasing a lot of singles all the time, versus a full album. Putting out 10, 11 songs, you know, kind of when you release it, if you don't do a video for it. It's not gonna go unheard, but it's not gonna get as much attention as the first four tracks or the, any song that has a video. You will end up with five or six songs on there that a lot, big percentage of your fans maybe never hear or kind of just, it's a weird like, almost like emotional thing. You're like, man, I'm gonna write five songs and like not that many people are gonna hear them, like guaranteed because people aren't popping in a CD and just listening to it in their car through the whole thing. They it's check very, it on a playlist It's very single-based, yeah. This goes on a playlist, this goes on a playlist, and then it changes to a new artist. So imagine being an artist like us, we're talking about releasing another record. We're kind of sitting here, cool, here's our first four singles, we're doing videos for them, all of them. Okay, now let's write five more that people won't really listen to. So it's not that you spend less time on them, but you have less a less connection to those songs or whatever it is. Part of me wishes it wasn't like that. Absolutely. But I think another important part of being an independent artist is recognizing like that is just the way that it is now and like making the most of it. Not to like call people up, but I think a lot of artists complain that Spotify is paying this and they complain. No one buys records, yeah, no one listens to songs. YouTube algorithm is like this and it's like, you can't really control that stuff. So you just kind of like gotta look at how it is and kind of just accept it as truth and fact, mm -hmm. and just kind of move forward with your plan, keeping those things in mind. We're lucky with how many covers that we do. It's pretty easy to get them up there and up on Spotify and iTunes and put them on YouTube. I mean, the monetization part of it has become extremely easy. And I think there are many companies that allow anyone to upload a cover to through their network onto Spotify and stuff like that. So it's not that it's difficult. These companies just pay out the artists that originally wrote the songs, and then we get to put it up on Spotify and YouTube and, and use them for pretty much whatever we want. But we do run into some issues with some of the older musicians, um, like the Hotel California one that we did. Yeah, occasionally there's like certain songs that the artists didn't clear. But for the most part, it's pretty much free range. I mean, these artists are looking at it like, wow, we're gonna have 100 or 5,000 YouTubers cover my Post Malone's new song of whatever it is. He's looking at that like, awesome. That's free promotion for me. I'm gonna absolutely allow that. I mean, that just gets my name bigger and the song bigger. So I think the artists like the fact that covers exist. We love doing them, it's super easy. Putting them up on Spotify. Playlisting is a huge thing for a band our size and genre. I mean, it's big for everybody. And it's tough to figure out. That's one thing that we're learning day by day to figure out how to get these playlists and some covers, some original music works and they land playlisting. So that kind of goes back to being no label and me being the manager type guy in the band. As much as we don't want to play the game of the, you gotta know this person or not suck up to this person, but we still have to be involved as much as yeah. possible or you're not gonna get these playlists. Or... And that helps, but it's not all puppet masters like pulling the strings yeah. 100%. Luckily, Spotify does a really good job at like algorithmic playlists. Mm -hmm. So if you're an independent artist and you do some research on that, you can kind of learn that that's based off your your fans on Spotify. You have your monthly listeners, which are who's, who's listening to you, but then you have your fans who are people who clicked follow. Mm -hmm. um, so all the algorithmic playlists are really based off that and kind of sending those people a new track when you release it. So that when you release a new track, it kind of hits those people and if they really like it and are playing it a lot, it starts to then go on these more random algorithmic playlists that are based off your like similar artists. A lot of that is strategic and you just kind of have to go and try to find blogs that talk about it and educate yourself. A 
lot of artists will kind of publicly kind of talk crap about Spotify and how much they pay. It's always like Spotify pays 0.0004 cents per every time someone listens to your song. That's sounds right. depressing and sounds unfair, but I think it's just looking at it in a shallow way. Because you have to keep in mind that that person that listens to that song, you're not monetizing the sale of that song. You're monetizing every single time that person listens to that song. Racking up really is kind of building a catalog of music and then getting a lot of streams on that and kind of it just kind of compounding over time. Mm -hmm. But I just don't like the misconception it creates for new artists thinking they're getting into an industry that they're never gonna make money in. You so then they usually sign to a label because then they think that's their only option in succeeding and making money or whatever it is. Then they're stuck in a seven year contract being like, wow, okay, should have at least given the DIY approach a try. I can't really say signing to a label is the right or wrong approach. I think it completely depends on the artist. I think it would be a horrible decision for our band to ever do that because we are so willing to put in the work and effort Without knowing it, we've developed a skills. lot of skills sure. that have that now allow us to do a lot of the things that we need to do to get music out there and to run our business. But at the same time, we know a lot of other bands, like bands we're friends with, that could totally pull it off and have similar skills to us that are still kind of like, I don't want to say afraid, but like kind of intimidated to kind of jump into that you have full control realm. It yeah. is intimidating, for sure, and it's a lot of work. And we always tell people, if you're not willing to go into your studio or wherever it is, your workspace, and work five days a week for eight hours a day, then it really is just not for you. Every single time I see friends that are getting out of contracts, I make it very clear. I'm like, try it, do an EP, do one single. And then if you sign to a label after that, at least you own that single or that EP forever, and you'll make whatever, 10,000 bucks or whatever it is off that. I talk to managers a lot about this, and they're always worried, okay, well, we're not on a label. Now people like don't take us seriously anymore. I'm like, really? People haven't been taking us seriously no in one? the industry for like five years, and it doesn't matter to us. They didn't take us serious when we were on a label. Who cares? If you draw kids, and you have huge streaming numbers, and your videos are viral and they go massive, why do you need anyone to take you seriously? And then there's a side of the artists starting a band because they didn't want to get a real job. And they don't want to sit here nine to five and work a normal job. We are looking at it like a business. We want it to be our job. We want this to let us have a family and buy us a house or whatever it is. It's different mindsets. I mean, again, it goes back to is signing to a label good or bad? How much are you willing so, to work? I mean, that kind of depends on whether you should sign to a label or not. I think, to put it into perspective, the type of artist I would tell to sign to a label is the type of person who wants to play stadiums, be on the radio, be a household name. If you want to be a celebrity and like mingle with Rihanna and Justin Timberlake, then you'll probably need a record label and their power to do that. But I think a gigantic misconception is if you just want to make the music you want to make and make a decent living, or, or a really good living, really, and you are not really the most popular artist in the world, uh, you can do that. You're just probably, I would tell that person to try to do it on your own. It's just about going out there and just doing whatever you feel is right. And fans can tell when you're being honest and you're actually putting out music that you want to put out. So I think that alone is extremely important. I also think it's incredible that you can now get a home studio for less than $3,000 and put out music that sounds pretty legitimate. My advice is just to do it. Just put any fear behind you and just get any tool that you need. Watch some YouTube videos on recording if you aren't fully up to date with that. Same with video, get a camera that's 500 bucks, film your own stuff and just get out there and do it.